Hey y'all, welcome back to Bombastic Gaming. I'm Jake. Thank y'all for tuning in and all the support. It is really greatly appreciated. But if you haven't already, you always know the drill. Please hit the like, the subscribe, and ring that bell so you can get notifications when videos like this one drop. Okay, so for this, we got another board game uh, review covering. So I'm gonna cover one of my favorite that's probably a little more well known uh, to most, and uh, it is Catan. We are gonna use the 3D version of Catan to just go over the base game. And then I'll explain also in the uh, overview of about all the different um, expansions that Catan has. Uh, well, I hope y'all enjoy. Here you go. All right, so now that we have the game set up in a generic way, uh, I'll explain it. So in the rules overview there is a setup as you can see here from the in the instructions it is where each piece should go in the numbers uh for beginners they have a setup however the game is set up where you can or designed i mean to be set up in any way shape or form between each of these little tiles here that they pop up. This is the 3D version of Catan, like I mentioned, uh, and these numbers. They're all interchangeable. As well as these little ports here. Uh, I will explain those, though, uh, in a little bit. So the objective of the game is to get 10 victory points. So, like I mentioned in the setup, you set the tiles in any order you would like with the numbers corresponding and then you need one desert tile. So how you get victory points is, one way is you have these little settlements and then there are, let's see if it'll focus, sorry. Uh, so you'll have these little settlements and then cities. So to start the game out, it's designed for two to four players, the base. You'll take turns, you roll to see who goes first and you take turns and you can put, uh, put these cities, sorry, you can put these settlements, I always get them mixed up, you can put them on any corner. So like for instance, we will put it right here uh, in between this 11, 2, and 3, which is a brick. Uh, this collects sheep and this collects wheat. There are five resources with each card uh, indicated for these resources. So here's your wood, your brick, your rock, sheep, and wheat. So we put our first city there and you will put a road. And then it goes around in order from whoever started first, second, third, fourth. Once it gets to the fourth person, they will put their first settlement down. And then they, the, it goes into reverse uh, clockwise order. So that fourth person would put down the set, uh, their next settlement, fifth, and then sixth, seventh. And then the starting player would s put their second settlement and road down in the like eighth spot, if you will. Um, there are a couple rules governing where you can place a settlement. So there has to be two roads in between each settlement, like here. Uh, let's see, can we focus, can we get it to zoom in? Yes, there we go. So you have to put, um, in between. You cannot, like if, uh, another person, so you can put like one here as well on this corner. However, you can't put one here, regardless of if there is like a, you know, the next one is with, uh, past the, the allotted distance. It has to be within two. Um, and as well, you can't plant a settlement that like in the game, if this was in the middle of the game, I can't plant the settlement there without having a road of my own touching it. But so each person will start off with two settlements and two roads. They don't have to connect. I could start off the game like this if I would so choose. And then at the start of the game, you will collect resources to start the game in whatever order um, is around your settlement. So like for this settlement right here, we would collect one sheep, one wheat, and a rock. And then over here, one wood, one sheep, and a wheat. Now the resources come into play because they allow you to build and develop. So here is the card. Each player gets one. This shows what resource you will need to build 
uh, roads, your settlement, your cities, and then a development card, which we will explain in a little bit. Uh, so the road and settlements, as you can see on the card too, the settlement is worth a victory point. The cities are worth two. Now you cannot just build a city. It has to be you upgrade a settlement to a city using those resources shown. Um, how it works is once you do that, uh, set up the settlements, the next player or whoever starts will roll the dice. Whatever number appears is whatever you collect. So like I roll here and I rolled a five. So anybody that has a settlement on a number that surrounds a five, which I'm trying to see where uh, here is a five. So like this, I would get one wood for that because I have a settlement touching a five wood. And you just keep going around collecting. You can only build on your turn. You can, uh, only the active player can trade with all other players. The other inactive players cannot trade when it's not their turn. And then, like I mentioned, so there are ports in the game. On your trading, though, which will help explain the ports, um, if nobody is willing to trade with you, you can trade into the bank at a four to one conversion. So if I had uh, like four bricks, but I needed one sheep, I could trade in four bricks to get that one sheep. Um, now, there are ports like this one here. We'll actually zoom back in. Let's see, will it focus up? So this represents a three to one resource. So if you have a settlement like over here, so like this is where the port is. So if your settlement is here, you have access to that port. And then if you did, you can trade a three to one resource instead of four to one. And then there are five ports, one of each resource that allows you to trade in that specific resource. So this represents like wood or logs or however you want to look at it. So if I had a settlement like here on this port, uh, it would be I could trade in only wood at a two to one rate for any resource. Uh, so that covers the trading piece. Now, there are like homemade rules you can implement in this game. We we always implement it got we have to go around two turns everybody gets two turns before the robber comes into play so what that is is uh but the rules do not specify so this represents the little robber token so what happens is um if a player rolls a seven all players have to count the number of resource cards in their hand only resource not the development um if you have more than seven like eight, eight or more, you have to discard half, rounded down, um, just immediately. You don't get a, like, try to build or anything like that. Even the active player has to do the same thing. Uh, and then the person that rolled the seven can move it and put it on any number. So, like, say, for the sake of argument, I'll put it here on this nine. If somebody had a settlement like this one, if a nine is rolled, they cannot collect while that robber is on there. But also, if the robber is touching that number when I place it there, I can steal a resource card from that player. And if there are multiple cities, like if there was like say a blue and a red or whatever, I could pick which of the one players that I was going to steal from. And then, so that's the way you gotta get 10 points. There are other ways to help you achieve the points. Oh, and also there was only enough, you can't win outright on just building settlements. You have to upgrade to cities. However, there are only, and you only have, um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, let's roll over here real quick to the pieces. So you have five settlements and four cities as your pieces. And there are no more and there's no ways to get them. So if you have um, five settlements and you want to build a six, you first have to upgrade one of those settlements to a city. And so if you have four settlements and you upgrade all of them to cities, that's only eight points. So you can't win outright like that. 
There are two ways to get two additional points. You have the longest road. So how this works is a player to fir the first player to build five roads in a row. So three, four, five, like this, as shown, they would then get this card giving them uh, the longest road, which is two victory points. Now for a player to overtake them, they have to build one more. They cannot be even, it has to be one, one more than what is the current longest road. And it has to be kind of in a line. You can wrap it around, but what I'm saying is, so if you do, if you had a bunch of roads like this, and there are seven down, it's not a continuous seven. It would take the longest segment. It, it doesn't allow for the branching off. And then the other one for the, is the extra two points is the largest army. So this comes into play, like I mentioned earlier, with the development cards. So here's the resources. And also I'd like to note the resource cost is the same for all four players. Like it doesn't change based on the color. So what you do is you pay a wheat, a sheep, and a rock to get one of these development cards here. Now they're supposed to be shuffled, random, and face down. And then you just take the top one. You cannot play these on the turn that you purchase them. And you're only allowed one per turn. So there are like a different varieties of them. However, this is the card that allows you to uh, get the largest army. So when you play the knight card, regardless of what number was ro rolled, you may move the robber and then steal a resource. So you could roll a seven in theory, then play the knight card and move it again if you wanted to as well. But so you have to have three of these on a single player to get the largest army. And then the same rules apply for the, like as the longest road, the next person would need to play four of these. There are, like I said though, there are other cards in here that allow you to do various things. So there's a card like this, which is called Monopoly. If you play this card, you announce one resource. All the players must give you that resource. There's like road, road building. So you can build two new roads is just if you had built them. And then there, there's a few others, but like this, here's a year of plenty. I'm just trying to go through them quickly to see if we can give you a variety. It's two resources from the supply and they can be the same or different resource. And then uh, I think that's all the different ones. And then last are these ones. So there are cards that just give you one victory point. And there, there are multiple, there are orange color coded at the top. Uh, so you can see as I go through this deck that there's a few of them. So that's a way to add and you surprise like you only play those cards face up. They are the exception to the rule. You play those cards face up once you have the exact number to win. So if you were at nine points, you draw that, then you can reveal that one because it's like, hey, I have 10 victory points and you win the game. First one to 10 wins. And that's pretty much how you play Catan. Um, this is, like I said, this is a 3D version of the game. They have released the Seafarers and I believe it's the City of Knights uh, um, expansions for this game in 3D uh, as well. So it's right here. So this is the other 3D. Yeah, so it's the, and the Cities of Knights. So they've done two of the expansions and this game has like a, obviously a regular 2D game version. The difference, so right now is that, like I said, the 3D is only for four players. They The regular game has an expansion to add five and six players. And then they created uh, six more expansions to add to the base game. Now, they're not designed to be all played at the same time. It's supposed to be like, I think at maximum, it's the base game and then your two expansions at most. And then each of those expansions have a five, six player expansion. And I'm sure you've seen some others. They have standalone versions. Like we have Catan Settlers of America. I think there's like a Catan, like India or Aztec. It's something like that. 
Um, and but there's various ones. It's a lot of fun. It's a great strategy multiplayer game. I would uh, highly recommend you check it out. And right now, most of the base games I believe are about fifty to sixty bucks, depending where you get it. This is normally like a three hundred dollar game, the three D version. However, Amazon, at least at the moment of when I'm recording this, they have them. The base one for like a hundred. I think this blue expansion was like 150 but you can check it out at uh at amazon well i hope y'all enjoyed this video of explaining how to play Catan settlers um hopefully we can get a gameplay of the actual video recorded sometime but until next time y'all have a blessed one and take care